would have been nice to have built a prototype, tested it to death, and then gone, well, we'll build eight of those. But we didn't have that luxury. We had to start building eight cars and test the first one we finished and then change anything that, that didn't work. So the pressure was on all the, all the time. We had this definite window of a frozen lake in this month or whatever. It had to be done in that time or otherwise it was a complete waste of money. In the end, everything went by boat to Iceland. It was 15 containers, I think, purely of car equipment. When we got there, it was appalling. You couldn't even stand up. You couldn't see. It was just a total white-out blizzard, and we, it was just a, a survival issue to start with. We didn't know how we were going to survive up there, let alone film anything. When we first ran the cars, we were bringing them back into the workshop at night, and they would freeze solid, so the whole axle, the calipers, the wheels were full of snow. We, they were frozen to the floor, actually. We couldn't actually move them. But just keeping the cars going was only one of the problems. The ice wasn't really as thick as we wanted it. We, we then decided to put inflation bags in all the cars. So, you know, God forbid if somebody did go through the ice, you wouldn't last long if, you know, it was a thousand foot deep. That made us scratch our heads a bit in case it went through the ice. <laughs> it's got to float. And that was only about a week before we left. We do try to be different. And we're all striving to, to kind of come up with things that have never, ever been attempted before. And it's, it's very difficult. There's a lot of competition out there. Each Bond film needs to be bigger and more spectacular than the last. So the pressure is always on to improve 007's options list and create ever more outrageous gadgetry. We can have um, machine guns. Little fire. And we can put out a set of rockets which will fire pyrotechnically. That's his sort of forward firing lower arsenal, if you like, and the forward firing or all directions firing upper arsenal are the, uh, the close and weapon support guns which are sort of self seeking and they're obviously meant to fire, they shoot anything out of the sky. For the very first time, the baddie's got gadgets as well, and he's got twice as many of them. There are rockets in the front, rockets in both side doors, a lethal Gatling gun in the back, and grenade launchers in the boot. Yeah, I think it's a natural progression for Bond. He's always been known for his gadgets, and I guess the, the baddie underworld is now catching on, and they're getting their fair share of weapons. And I think the whole uniqueness about the chase is that Bond has his weapons, the baddie has his weapons, and in fact, they equal each other out. After several weeks filming on the frozen lake for the main driving sequence, the Bond crew returned to the UK to complete the remainder of the chase and all the detailed stunt work. Back home, they choreographed the scenes in which the cars continue their duel inside the villain's ice palace and picked up the main action shots for one of the most demanding stunts in the film. One particular time, Bond finds himself sliding along upside down in his car. He then uses his ejector seat to, to right the car and then drive off unscathed. Well, he might be, but these won't be, so getting him upside down is going to cost a couple of Astons, I think. And getting him the right way up will probably cost a couple more. They burst into the interior of this ice palace, and so it's the two cars, the Vanquish preceding the Jaguar, smashing into the ice palace. It wasn't just simply a case of bursting into it, he had to actually uh, ram two skidoos that were in the way, so he had to do a nifty little rig to make sure they got out of the way, because they're not the lightest of things to start ramming.
the Ice Palace chase. That was never envisaged, first off. I grew up, and uh, the, the set has been modified, strengthened, to make a chase that you could you could film contiguously if you wanted to. And it's very helpful, you know, with the uh, action unit director, that we don't have to keep cutting and doing this bit there, that bit there, you know, and you can get this continuous flow of movement. The end of the sequence, having done a whole chase inside the ice palace, it'll right. burst out through the wall and do like, we've, we've measured out about a 50 foot jump, we've got a double pipe ramp, so it'll jump about 50 foot and hopefully you don't bend it too much. Going through the wall coming out, we had to give certain protection to the the stunt driver because he didn't have the protection of an ordinary windscreen. So yeah, we put special screens in. We put in a 10 millimeter Macrolon screen that's bolted in so none of the debris can actually get to him. Uh, we've got runners under the car to protect the underside of the car when he runs up the tube ramp. And we've raised the car slightly just to help it on its way again. For him inside, we've rolled the seat back so he's laying down five-point harness. It just makes it easier for him when the car, if we do have a, a very heavy landing, then it's not going to jar his back or anything like that. He's strapped in wearing a hat and everything's padded that we can pad, so hopefully he'll be safe. Conditions had to be perfect before the five cameras used to capture the stunt could roll. Extra sacks of fake snow were laid to cushion the car's landing. Then it was simply a case of watching and waiting until the stunt driver decided that the time was right. Only then would he go for it. Although both the film set and the vanquish took a bit of a beating, the end result, even by Bond standards, is truly spectacular. When it comes to creating awesome stunts with real cars, the Bond team have consistently led the way for the past four decades. And it really can be said that nobody does it better. And Tiffany Dell's back with the rest of the team for fifth gear tomorrow night at 8.30 on 5. Well, there's no stunt driving coming up next, and even Bond would want to get out of the way for this lot. Britain's worst drivers get behind the wheel next.